Alright, so the big secret to one of these jigs is they have to write flat on here and they have to be nice and adjacent, perpendicular to the top of the saw and parallel with the saw blade. Now what I do when I make these, I'll make this a little high, I'll give it an eighth or a quarter high, because then, because I know for me, anytime I go to glue or screw something up like this, it never stays where I want it. And so what I'll do is I'll screw it up, yeah, I'll screw it up, I'll glue it, let it dry, and then what I do, I set my table saw to shave just about half a saw blade off of this to take up any inconsistencies, because right now, I should not have any wobbling like that on here. So we're going to hit that, and let's see what happens. Probably, we're going to see if we can shake the camera knot on you. Let's we'll see if it goes the way we want for once. There, we pretty well took the wobble right out of her. That's a lot better. That was driving me nuts. So when I get done making that cut, let's see how this goes. When this thing's sitting on its own, it should be decently square. And it's right there. I mean, it is nice and square. I'll take that all day long. So I'm not quite satisfied yet. I know it sits nice and flat. But I want to make sure that we're going to run nice on this thing on the fence. I don't know why I just called it a thing. So I'll run it back and forth. It clears all the screws. Gets all that nice. It's nice and tight. It's not wobbling all over the place. So I want to check it again for square now that we're sitting on the fence. Beautiful. And check it both ways. Check it along. Not too bad. So we're nice and tight on here. Now I have a spot where if I feel this rock at all, I know that there's something wrong. Now let's make it so this thing glides nice. I'll tell you what guys, it really helps to have a friend who's a beekeeper. It helps a lot. You get beeswax, whatever you need it. I always try to keep a little bit handy. That is fresh, all natural beeswax. Compliments of our friend Kim Crass from Crass Family Farms. You guys may remember him from when we did the uh, sharpening of the saw blades on the wood miser sharpener a while back. Well, the other options probably would be easiest here. Rather than trying to run this up in there. Just a little more room here. See if that helps. What a difference a little bit of beeswax makes, huh? That rides nice on there. We clear all of the heads on it. About a sixteenth of an inch to spare there. I don't know if you guys can see that on camera. But that glides nice. We've got a little bit, but that that is nice. Nice and square. I will take it. Now let's start putting all the fun stuff on here. Now we've got it kind of 
into where we want it. All right, so we're going to mount some stuff to this, make it a little bit easier to use, make it a little more accurate. So I want a, I want a decent kind of a fence on this thing for the piece to ride on. I went with a piece of elm. It's nice and dry. It's ready to go. A lot of times you just see them put a small piece of wood like that on there. But I like to, if I want to be able to, I need something to clamp the wide part of the boards to. And I'm using this also because it'll help keep this plywood rigid and straight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this on. We're going to clamp it and then we're going to screw it from the back side. But I don't want to put screws down too far so I think the cut on our saw is four inches total. Maybe a little bit under. So we're going to measure up. Yeah, let's see. I'm just going to do a half ass measurement here. Four and an eighth. Just so I know not to run any screws up past that point. So we'll glue this, we'll clamp it. And we'll call her almost ready. Now we did run this piece through the joiner to make sure that everything's nice and square on it. Because that would certainly not be any fun. I'm also leaving it a little shy of the bottom here. So we'll get one clamp on top and then we will, uh, if I can find them, there we go. We want to double check that before we put the bottom clamp in. Didn't think that could be right. Check it one more time. Beautiful. We'll buy a construction. New battery. I do like to double check a million times on this because this is <clears throat> this is really important. Oh, there it is. Nice.
Now for the fun part. So we put ourselves a little half-ass handle on here. Get a little bit of a fence. And set her down. I have this marked where I want it. So what I want to do is I'm going to clamp this guy in. And there are much fancier and nicer ways to clamp this stuff in, but this works just fine for me. Now, a big thing we want to make sure, we want to make sure that this is tight in here, and we want to make sure it's tight to there. So it's nice about having this up here. It gives you another spot to push against. And then if you're running it like that, it makes it nice and easy. Now, I've already had the depth of the blade set. Now we're just going to dial this in a little bit. Should probably make that a little easier to see. Actually, you know what? We know we need a quarter inch. It's good to check it after you've set that too. Alright, let's see what happens. All right, so here's our tenon. We have a mortise cut in this. We're just going to test it out. It's probably a little tight, but I just want to see how it goes more than anything. Not too bad. I get done beating the hell out of it. So anyway, let's see if we can get you in the camera here. So there she is. Person needs a little more fitting. I mean, it's not. You're not going to get your final final on that when you do that so you're obviously you're gonna have to do some cleanup things like that but it actually works quite well and it's much faster of course I nicked the wood there doing the mortise on accident but that's her and that is our tenoning jig for the table saw simple it's crude but it works well folks another Friday night has come and gone so that is our tenoning jig for the table saw I said it's nothing fancy, it's nothing beautiful, but it's functional. That cost uh, probably about 25 bucks to make buying the uh, piece of half inch cabinet plywood. Um, I'd like to double them up, get that one inch, because the half inch just isn't going to stay stable, stay straight. I like putting the piece of hardwood, a big piece on the back, that'll help keep everything rigid and straight. So a big thing, make sure it's tight to that fence, make sure it's square to the table and square to the blade, and it'll make you a really nice tenon, really fast, really easy. I probably could have made, probably could have shaved just a little bit more. It's, it was, I was going for a quarter inch, and I was just a little bit over, so I had to, I did sand down the tenon a little bit to fit into that mortise. Uh, the mortise was only a quarter inch, but that's what we have. That's, that's a nice way of putting cabinet doors and things like that together. It makes a really strong glue joint. It makes it so you don't need screws and things like that. Um, obviously there's some things I'm going to do to refine the process, make it a little more 
we have to make a proper crosscut sled. Uh, the dado sled's good for dados, but it's no good for a crosscut sled. We're also going to be making a zero clearance table saw insert, and that's really easy to do. We'll take a piece of scrap half inch plywood that we have. We'll make that. Unfortunately, the plywood we have now, it's just a shade under a half an inch, and that makes it a real pain in the ass to make anything, uh, especially something like a table saw insert where you have to have it flush to the top. That should be about a half inch drop in there. So we'll have to, uh, we'll do some things for that. I may make it out of the plywood. I also have a piece of old restaurant cutting board out in the pit of despair that maybe I'll pull out, clean it up. That might be a half an inch. That might be right on the money half an inch. And that, if that is, that'll probably make an even better insert plate than a piece of half inch plywood. So we have that coming up. We're going to have a small bench mounted, a small bench top router table we're going to work on. We've got another piece of plywood here for that. And Basically, we're just going to, like I said in the last video, we're going to go through and we're going to make we're going to make all our jigs and everything first. We're going to try to make them so they last a long time so I can use them on more than just one project. Uh, jigs are so handy. A lot of you asked while I was building this building, why aren't you using jigs? Why aren't you using jigs? And my answer always was, <coughs> the timbers are not exact, so I... I don't use jigs a lot when I'm doing the timber framework, but when I'm doing cabinet work, I really like jigs. I like jigs quite a bit for cabinet work. It just makes everything quicker, everything easier, everything a little more accurate. You repeat processes, so anyway, that's what's going on, that's what's coming up. Uh, I guess I will see you guys on the next one.